Hello everybody, we are so glad you have tuned in for Kids Worship. It's gonna be really fun. My friend Brianna is here. Say hi. Hi. Brianna is in fourth grade? Yes. I, I really can't believe it because I remember when you were little, like three. Yes. I mean, and now you're just like big, big enough to be on camera here and help me tell the story. Okay, so the story today, here's the question I want you guys to be thinking about. And Brianna, we were chatting before this a little bit. What is a time that you have asked Jesus for something or prayed to Jesus about something and you felt like the answer came a little differently or took a little longer for the answer to come? Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, go for it. So. Um, it was, it was, we were playing video games and then we stopped because You we and, who, who's we? You and your sister? Um, yes, okay. Bianca, my You're big sister. Big sister, yes. Yes, we, we played video games and then my mom told us to stop and I prayed that we wouldn't, we wouldn't get in a fight yes. until we did. Oh man. And you prayed, God help me not get in a fight with my sister, but then it happened? Yes. Yeah. Um, cause she thought I hid the thing under my bed, uh -huh. but I actually did it. And it was my little sister that was playing under there. And yes. then I had to, had to prove to her that it wasn't me. So my little sister was playing and then under my bed. And then I told her to come into the room so she could see that it was my little sister yeah. that was playing with her stuff. And then y'all got the argument figured out. Yes. You call that would be called you reconciled. Yes. Wow. Okay. So I want to hear you guys have a discussion. I wish I could hear it. I, I won't be able to hear it, but I want you guys to have a discussion about a time that you have prayed for something and you felt like the answer was either a little different than what you thought it was going to be, or the answer came later than what you wanted it to come. Okay, go for it. Okay, I hope y'all had good discussion. We're gonna talk after we worship about a couple of sisters and a time that they called out to Jesus and it took them a while to answer. Okay, let's worship. All right, sing with me the greatest day. Greatest day in history. Death is beaten, you have rescued me Sing it out, Jesus is alive The empty cross, the empty grave Life eternal, you have won the day Shout it out, Jesus is alive He's alive
right, I love kids worship. Did you love it? All right, we're gonna jump into our story, Brianna. I'm so glad you're here to help me tell this. I am this, glad to. I know, you know the story I'm gonna tell, right? Okay, so this is in John 11. John 11 is in the New Testament. So what's happening is Jesus is with his disciples and he gets word. I don't know how they, they maybe had, you know, um, people that transferred messages. Like, I don't, they didn't have a t telephone, right, back in the day. So I don't know how Jesus got the message. It doesn't include that detail. But Jesus gets the message that his friend Lazarus is sick. And Lazarus has two sisters, Mary and Martha, who Jesus was also close to. And so Jesus hears this and he loves Lazarus and he hears he's sick. And when I'm reading this, I would think Jesus would be like, oh, Lazarus is sick. Let's go. Let's get there because I know what to do with six people. Right. Yes. But Jesus says to his disciples, no rush. Let's just let's hang out here for a little bit longer. Oh, I know. And so the disciples are like, okay, that's, that's weird. We thought Jesus would want to go be with Lazarus. So he waits. A couple days later, Jesus and his disciples start heading towards Lazarus and Mary and Martha. And they start getting close. And Martha, one of Lazarus's sisters, oh. hears Jesus is coming and runs to meet him. And she says, Jesus, you're too late. Lazarus is already dead. We've already buried him in his tomb. We've already buried him. And we find out that all of these Jewish people that were from different towns outside of where Lazarus and Mary and Martha lived had come to see Lazarus um, buried. Buried. Kind of like for, for his funeral. Mm -hmm. So lots of Jewish people had come in this time. And so, um, so Mary's still in the house. Martha meets Jesus, tells Jesus the news, and Jesus goes to see Mary. And Mary and Martha are so sad. They must have the, been crying really hard. Yeah, they are. And Jesus is sad. Do you know how we know that Jesus is sad in this story? Mm -hmm. Do you know how? Because he's sad that, like, you know how all the people are good to him? Uh-huh. Um, it's just that when when he met Mary and Martha that that day, yeah, he knew that he was too late and he, that's when he started crying and he started getting emotional. And he saw that they were sad. And it says in here that Jesus wept. Jesus cried. And I think that's so like Sometimes we think about Jesus being like, was, you know, yeah, he was human, but Jesus had real feelings. Like tears came down. He cried because Lazarus oh. had died and he saw that Mary and Martha were sad. And so he goes to Lazarus's tomb and Mary and Martha are there and all of the Jewish people that were there for like, sort of like for Lazarus's funeral were all, of, all there. And Jesus says this to some of the people. Hey, take the stone away. Now the stone, like uh, the way that people were buried back then was different than it is now. Yeah. That they would put people in caves and then cover the cave with a stone. Like a big rock. Yeah, like a big rock. And so Jesus said, told the people, take away the stone. That is a big, big stone. It's a big stone. And they're like, this is weird because Lazarus is dead. Why are we taking away the stone? And then Jesus says this, and I want to read it word for word because I think it's, it's, I just think it's pretty cool. So Jesus says they took the stone away and Jesus looks up and he says this, Father, so he's talking to God, I thank you, here you want to look at it? Yeah. Um, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. So Jesus is looking up at the sky, looking to God, and this huge crowd of people is there. And why are the people there? 
Because they want to see Lazarus buried. Exactly. They all came for Laz Lazarus' funeral. And so they're all standing there and Jesus says this, I'm saying this so that all of these people that happen to be here will see who I am. That I am Jesus, your son that you sent on earth. All of this has happened so that all these people will see who I am. And then... I just like this part. I know. Do you know what Jesus says? Yes. He says, Lazarus, come out. I know. Lazarus comes out. Yes! Yes! Can you imagine? All of those people. And then this man who has been dead, Lazarus, that they were sad about, who was dead. And he walks out. And Jesus says, take off those grave clothes. Because, you know, they would wrap people's bodies. Yes, with the... Take with off like those grave skin. clothes and let him go. And so Lazarus came out of the grave and had life. And you think, at the time, Mary and Martha are sitting there going, why is Jesus not doing what we asked him to do? Why is Jesus not here? Why is he not here? Because Lazarus wouldn't die if he was here. And Jesus had a plan all along. Oh. Right? Do you get it? It's pretty cool. And here's what I think, that God is doing things all the time. God is doing things all the time so that you and me and people that don't know him will see who he is and believe in him. That Jesus wanted all of that to happen so all of the people would see, hey, Jesus is the son of God. And he's great and he's brave to do anything. He is. Yes. Okay, so I don't know about you, but I have not seen in my 35 years of walking on earth, I have not seen a dead person come to life. Me either. I haven't. But I have seen God do unbelievable things that have made me go, okay, you're real. God, you are real. I have seen him do unbelievable things. And I was wondering, have you seen God do anything that you've that has made you go, okay, you're real. That's unbelievable. You are real. Yes. Okay, share me. Share. I want to so, hear. So there is example this is an example. Uh -huh. Um it was we were me and my mom and my sisters used to walk every day in the park. Yep. Like where the park is. Uh-huh. And then I saw this flower that I really, really wanted to grow, and nobody cared about it. Yeah? Yeah. Nobody grew it. Okay. But I... You just noticed it. You noticed this little flower. Yes. Okay. And it was just like this tiny. Mm-hmm. And the next, like, it was a few days past, and we went walking in again, and it was right to here. Uh-huh. Whoa. And I thought somebody cared about it, but I didn't see nobody walked around here. Uh-huh. And then all of a sudden, the next few days that passed, I saw it grew like a beautiful, beautiful flower. No way. And I knew God was with that flower. That, that God made that flower grow. Yes. And you saw God through that. Yes. That's a great story. That here's the deal. You don't have to see just, you know, a, a dead person come to life to see God. That God is doing things all the time so that we will know who he is and that he's at work. So this might be a big question. It might take a little bit of like, okay, I really need to think about this. But I want you guys to think about what is a way or what is something that has happened in your life where you have seen God do something that helps you believe who he is. Okay, go for it.
Anyway, I hope you all had good conversation. I'm telling you what, it, whether it's with a flower that you see on a walk or a really sweet friendship that you've formed or just some way, some little thing in life where you're like, you know what, God, you did that. You showed up that he's doing things like that all the time. Um, okay, I was wondering if when I was telling that story, you were thinking about a particular worship song. Anybody? Anybody? It's the song that we sing called Glorious Day. And it goes, the words are, and then you called my name. And you remember, Jesus called Lazarus. And I ran, ran out, out of that, that grave. grave. Y'all, that song that we sing is this story from the Bible. Okay, so we are gonna sing that right after Rihanna prays for us. And um, we need to get jazzed up about it. We need to have a lot of energy because this is an awesome song about this real story that happened. Okay, let's pray. God, thank you that you put me here to pray with all these people that are around us and that you would just bless us with joy and peace. And when we feel down and that we don't feel like we're, we're in the mood to be happy, you can pray to God and know that he's there always for you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my truth Till I met you I was breathing but not
moms and dads, I just wanted to be sure you knew about our podcast. It's called Four Parents, and it is just a place for you to receive encouragement. And I'm interviewing parents who have been there. So they're normal people. They're not like people with special degrees or have written books or anything, but just normal people who have walked through parenting. And I have been super encouraged by it, and I would love for you to take a listen. So they're released every Thursday morning, and you can find them on all major podcast apps, you know, like Spotify and Apple and all those things. So just search for parents, and I hope you enjoy. Enjoy.